Welcome to the Live to 110 podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Myers, and you can find me on LiveTo110.com. And you can watch this video on my YouTube channel at Wendy Live to 110 or on the blog post on the website, LiveTo110.com. And today I'm really excited. We have got Dr. Greg Teft. He is a DO, a naturopathic doctor, and a PhD. And he's going to be talking to us about how to improve your brain function. I know a lot of people out there um, have brain fog, and uh, you know it starts to set in. You know, in your 30s, then 40s, and gets worse. I know that I had a big problem with it, so I'm very, very interested personally and how to improve your brain function, improve your memory and improve your brain function. So that's what we're going to be talking about today on the show. And first we have to do the disclaimer. Please keep in mind that this program is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease or health condition and is not a substitute for professional medical advice. Uh, This show is for entertainment purposes only and you should consult your healthcare practitioner before engaging in any treatment or diet that we suggest on the show today. And I had such a good time this weekend. I went to the Bulletproof Biohackers Conference put on by Dave Asprey every year. On Friday, I was talking about infrared saunas. So many amazing luminaries in the biohacking field converged onto the Pasadena Convention Center to talk about all the ideas. So many amazing ideas and lectures at this conference. I ate it all up and was drinking bulletproof coffee the whole time. <laughs> and uh, everyone is buzzing at the conference. Everyone's all wired on bulletproof coffee the whole time. It was really, really funny. Um, but I got to meet Dr. Sarah Godfried and Donna Gates and JJ Virgin and April James and Dave Asprey himself and met so many amazing people and I was just really honored to be a part of it. And I believe the videos are going to be available for sale at some point. They're going to make all the the, the uh, conferences, all the presentations available for sale. Um, so you can go to Dave Asprey's website, uh, bulletproofexec.com and find out more information about that when they'll be available. And um, so let's get on to the, with the interview. Um, Dr. Greg Teft is a drugless physician who specializes in orthomolecular medicine. He is also a naturopathic doctor, a chiropractor, and a renowned clinical bionutritionist and wellness practitioner. He's also the author and founder of Personalized Nutrition Consultants. Dr. Teft is also a former sports medicine staff member for the U.S. Olympic team, uh, the U.S. national swim team, and the race across America and other elite sports organizations. Uh, He's written two books and today specializes in his practice of personalized medicine uh, using hair mineral analysis. And I just bought his book on personalized nutrition and I'm I'm really excited to read it the the next following few weeks. And I also, um, you know, I'm really excited to learn about Dr. Teff's uh, nutrition program. And that's part of what we're going to be talking about today on the show to figure out how to improve your brain function. So Dr. Teff, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hi, Wendy. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? And, yeah, I you know, to say one thing before I yes. start. According to UCLA and the Arizona Biosphere 2 experiment, we should all live to be 166 if we could balance our body. <laughs> and, how about that? 110 is just warm up. <laughs> well, you know, I looked at 120.com, lived to 130, lived to 140.com. They were all taken. <laughs> <laughs> So I couldn't quite get up there, but I thought live to 110.com. It was taken too. I still had to buy it, but um, I thought it was kind of funny, so I bought that. Well, either way, <laughs> we're not getting our life expectancy. We really could, you know, back just on that, just throw a, a you know a tidbit out to your your audience. Uh, you know, we have gone from 1969 being, from being fifth in the world for life expectancy. Can you imagine to 39th now? We are losing it. So just to throw that out there. So this is an issue. And, you know, life expectancy has to do with everything about, you know, health and well-being. Yes. It has to do with whether we're getting sick or not or degenerating quickly or premature aging or any of the things we're going to talk about today, neuro, neuro, can't say it, neurodegenerative problems and such. Yeah. So I just thought that would, you know, people just, they don't know we're slipping. And then we're told everything's okay because we're all drugged out. So... It's unfortunate, but people are living on drugs when they need to be living off of the right foods and maybe vitamins and other helpers along the way that can help you to put things back in balance in, at a, in a day when the food is diluted, the environment's corrupted, there's all this toxic stuff, the stress, the drugs, oh my gosh. 
Yeah, I think people under, under the misconception, they think that we have the best medical care in the world. But I was really surprised and dismayed uh, when I read in Consumers Reports on Health that our, our health care system actually rates, ranks number 17. Um, yes. As far as we have such, we have a high infant mortality rate, and it's all due to nu poor nutrition and heavy metal and chemical toxicity. And you know, I work with people in other countries. We send tests to them, and we do, you know we do consultations with with this means mm -hmm. like another thing. And you know what? Other countries, in fact, statistically, rate much better on nutrition tests mm -hmm. than we do. Wow! So I mean, it, the statistics are there. This country, I don't know what your statistics are for the hair test that you do, as an example, but. I would say uh, uh, almost 99%, 99.5 or so percent of the people I test just with simple mineral analysis, about a third of what we test or more is out of order already causing all these little problems they never knew are going to build up to the big problems that you can fix if you jump on it soon enough and know what the heck to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, why don't you tell us how you got into it, how you got into hair mineral analysis and how you got all these degrees. <laughs> You've been... Well, you know, it's just I like school. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's do No, just kidding. But uh, the way it really started for me was I was supposed to be in the 72 Olympics, and uh, I was – I had beaten Mark Tremblay, who beat Spitz in the 68 Olympics. I don't know if you remember Mark Spitz. You know, everybody yes, – yeah. you know, oh, he won the – he was the first guy to win seven gold medals in swimming. His coach was my part-time coach, Sherm Shavor, and I was from the East Coast, and he, you know, <laughs> uh, Spitz was from the West Coast, more or less. Actually, he went to Indiana. He was Midwest. But nonetheless, uh, on my way, and I was only 17. In high school, I was already, you know, I actually uh, swam at UConn, University of Connecticut, uh, as part of my prep, because they thought I was going to make the 72 Olympics, you know, in Munich. And all of a sudden, it was the year just, oh, it was uh, maybe about seven months before the Olympics, uh, my two best buddies were killed in a car accident. I pulled them out of a car. It's a very sad story. And almost from that moment on, I had the worst asthma you can ever imagine. And I went through the docs and they said, well, you know, it's stress induced asthma. You're allergic to what, uh, chicken feathers, uh, <laughs> dust <laughs> and, uh, dust mites, you know, that's all they could find with the test they used. So I was, I'd missed the 72 Olympics because I couldn't breathe. And you can't use the medications that they give you for asthma at the Olympics. Or can, you know, they, they improve performance because they're mm -hmm. stimulants. So I, I passed. I thought, okay, I'll pick it up on the next one. Maybe I can make it again. If I can ever overcome this asthma. And they tell me, no, you can't, you can't. You're stuck with it. you got to take the meds. It was really a sad situation. So a fellow by the name of Dr. Carlton Fredericks had a radio show back in New York and he was talking about all these tests beyond what they teach medical doctors that you can do to pinpoint all these problems in the body, like hair testing, mm -hmm. as an example, looking at things that the regular docs aren't looking for in crisis chemistries. And my dad was looking to try to help me, and he was on, actually called in, and he got Dr. Fredericks on the phone. He says, here, tell him what your problem. And I got on the phone, and Dr. Fredericks said, hey, what's, uh, tell me about you. And I was telling him, well, you know, I got this horrible asthma. I've had to been hospitalized three times. I can't breathe. You know, I've dropped out of school for a year, had to go back in. And um, he said, well, you know, um, you probably have not enough magnesium. Maybe you got some toxic metals in you. You know, maybe there's a couple of other things. Maybe the chlorine in the pool, you know, has created a, a copper zinc. In I mean, all these things I'd never heard before. Yeah. And the regular docs were just saying, I oh, know, you know, you got asthma, take these drugs. That's it. You're stuck with it. So I went to a research clinic in New York. At, he gave me the, um, the information and had all these tests they'd never seen before. Nutrient cell regulators and toxicants. So all these nutrients, minerals, vitamins, amino acids, fatty acids, vitamin-like substances, neurotrans I'm sorry, um, cell regulators like neurotransmitters, which we're going to talk about, uh, transfer proteins and hormones, stress and sex hormone, and uh, also toxins. There's 400 toxins out there. And what they found, we don't have time for the show. Yeah. All this stuff in me, that the mercury, all this crazy stuff, a magnesium deficiency, absolutely. And I went on a diet, not a drug, a diet that was made customized to me and customized vitamins. And within a year and a half, I never had an asthma attack again. Hmm. How's that? So I put it to the test. I went into three other sports. I became, I was, I tried to get back to the Olympics, fifth in the junior Olympics in track and field using personalized nutrition. I was there because I was strong into powerlifting. I became a super powerlifter. And then was at last, my last but not least there, I got into natural bodybuilding and became Natural Mr. America three times, mm -hmm. which nobody else has done. I tried to win the regular Mr. America, which is two weeks later, against the drug people. 
and could only manage, uh, what was it, 8th, 7th, and 6th. But that's mean, not bad for the whole country. You mean the guys on steroids? Yes. <laughs> guys on steroids. So, I mean, it really worked. And mentally, I mean, my IQ has gone up. Yeah. I mean, I'm 61 now. But nonetheless, I wanted, at that point along the way, I've got to devote myself to this. That's where I put my curriculum focus into it. And the first thing I did was, when I was able to treat people, was get them worked out. You know, in as Hippocrates said, in all disease, look to the spine first. That's where your body work comes from. Let thy food body be thy remedy. That's my second layer. And then treat the individual, not the disease. He said that back in 2500 BC. That was my mantra. So I did that holistic at, at its best. And just through a series of, I guess, just good luck and getting some great results, ended up in Malibu like you. Malibu Health and Rehab and uh, was on CBS this morning talking about how I had helped all these celebrities in record time turn themselves around using all these newfangled technology. Hair mineral yes. analysis, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, from there, you know, I decided let's get it to the masses. So, you know, I put together an internet company in 2001 and we've been doing this ever since and running strong. And now, of course, we're actually merging with another company called Only Nature's Finest to even get bigger and more, you know, out there. And working with rehab centers, yeah. mm -hmm. the addicts, yeah. uh, who have all kinds of, oh, my God, toxic, all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. So, and along the way, of course, being a, an athlete, being mm -hmm. Mr. America, Dr. Chapter, whatever, it really got me into a lot of places. I even got a SAG card, got into, did a lot of TV, <laughs> and brought in a lot of information, was on Fox. I don't know if you saw the Fox video on yeah. the yeah. Okay. Fox loved it. They checked this out. They said, no, nah, this is too good to be true. Yeah. You know, and it's not. So I devoted my life to this more or less. And uh, as you can see in the book, uh, I mean, I, I every test you name, I'm an expert at. And I can build a lab from the ground up because the whole secret to knowing what's really going on with you is to reach inside and see all the stuff that everybody else forgets about. Uh, like Dr. Brody says, the average physician only looks at maybe 5% of what he or even less than what's really going on in your body. And 99% of what's going on, you can't feel till it reaches a certain point anyway. So you can't always go by symptoms either. Yeah. And regular mm -hmm. medicine is there to catch you when you fall, not prevent you from falling. So the whole thing came together for me. And the rest is history. <laughs> Working for the Olympic team, wonderful. US now, all the people, by the way, at the top do this test. Yeah, yeah. Oaks, uh, Dolph Lundgren, one of my protégés. Fabio Lanzoni, you know, the guy with the long hair. Yeah. They love it. <laughs> Good, he's got a lot of hair to test. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to advertise, but one of the most famous bodybuilders in the world has this test sitting yeah. in front of him. Yeah. And, um, and I've worked, you know, when Fox had pictures of the people at the SAG Awards, at the Emmy Awards, rather, a lot of those people were on, were on my program with me. Okay, yeah. Or, you know, and so the whole point being that, it always seems like the rich and famous find out about these things before everybody else. But part of the problem was it was more expensive, it was more complicated. All these things are simpler, less expensive. And the beautiful part is with hair testing, since you love hair testing, it's been cross-correlated with a lot of this. So if your calcium is high or sort of low in your mineral test, it means that maybe vitamin B6 you need more of it. I mean, it tells you all this other information. But And I used to do that in Malibu, put them all side by side, and I say, oh, my God, when calcium's up, neutral amino acids are higher. So it really for a lot of people helps, it changes their lives yeah. automatically. So yeah. I mm -hmm. love it. And um, that's kind of my story. And, you know, hopefully someday I have a new book called How to Fix the Broken Healthcare System. I'm going to tie this all together into a an incentivized program where you actually get paid to be well. Yeah. We actually test you completely. We design a wellness prescription for life. And then we provide a discount and payback system for everything you need that's specific to you through all the sources. It's yeah. an amazing idea. Um, so that's my big goal. Maybe we can actually revamp the healthcare system. So all this story I'm telling you uh, leads up to, hey, maybe there's something we can do to make this insurance system, which is so broken, yeah. work again. Well, that's a fascinating <laughs> concept. I mean, we, we need that so badly. I fear the uh, big, powerful pharmaceutical companies aren't going to let that happen. Um, but I, I think that's amazing. I think uh, we need that so badly. But I think as foot soldiers for hair mineral analysis and personalized nutrition. I think that I really want to get the word out on that because I think, you know, once practitioners find hair mineral analysis, they don't go, they don't go back. They don't look any further because I feel like it's the Holy grail. Once I found this, um, it's, it's really the key to health balancing your minerals. So that, that produces tremendous amount of health and balancing your biochemistry.
you are absolutely right. They give you so much more for so much less. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, they figured it out. They put all the tests side by side. So mm-hmm. I agree with you 100%. And, uh, you know, it surprises people when they have such poor test results. It really does. Yeah. But either way, it's a major tool. And it's a self-help. I mean, it's really outside of the doctor's office. you got to help yourself. you got to choose different foods. We already have people on one-size-fits-all diets, and like we were talking about, uh, you know, from blood type to you name it. Uh, but without testing, you can't tell really what your body needs. I mean, that's the, the predication for all of uh, medicine. You don't just go to the doctor and he looks at your sheet and doesn't test you to figure out what drugs you need or what's wrong with you. you got to test you. Yeah, yeah. You are not what you eat. You are what you retain and utilize from what you eat. That's the same. And that varies from person to person to person. Yeah. So mm-hmm. about digestion, absorption, utilization, and elimination. doesn't matter what your genes say because your ability to adapt to the environment can throw your metabolism off. And your genes to the, you know wants one thing, but metabolism can only deliver another. And that's where the breakdown of disease goes. So in the epigenetics world and the genetics wor- geneticist world, what we're trying to do is create harmony between the internal environment and external environment. And not everybody's the same. So, you know, an Eskimo needs maybe a whole bunch more whale blubber than an East Indian Hindu vegetarian who can't, will, will die young if he eat whale blubber. We're the, yeah. <laughs> we're mixed up. You know, everything's in the middle for us. So testing's the only way to sort this out. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're part of a primal tribe like a Hunza or Soviet Georgian or Lake Titicacan or something. And they have the best nutrition tests, hair and otherwise, of all, by the way. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. Well, that's so really interesting. I had I had realized there had been testing done on them. <laughs> oh yes, that's yeah. why books too much information. Had to get it out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, so let's talk about brain fog a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of people suffer from brain fog. It's not something you can go to your doctor and get tested for, or that they can relieve in any way. Um, they just kind of look at you like you're nuts. Like join the club. Everyone has brain fog. So what what causes brain fog and um, what reduces brain function? Well, water for one thing, right? A lot of people don't drink enough water. Water slows your whole body down. And let's just say about brain and body. I mean, they work together. You can't separate them out that much because what you put in your body gets into your brain. And what's in your brain feedback feeds back to your body. I know there's that blood-brain barrier. But, you know, just general things like protein, not too much carbohydrate, not enough protein. Uh, water, you know, like I said, uh, you know, not getting enough sleep, <laughs> you know, allergies, uh, there's a whole host of things that can, uh, nutritional uh, imbalances of all kinds, like copper, which I guess we're going to talk about some more. Uh, these are primary reasons why, and then of course drugs. I mean, drugs can create all kinds of stresses that affect neurotransmitters, that affect the integrity, the structure, and the function of the brain in so many ways it's not funny. So we have almost half of America on a drug right now, and a lot of their brain dysfunction just from the medication. It's a side effect, too. Yeah. So. The thyroid being slow, the adrenals being slow, all increases, uh, you know, the brain fog. Obviously, you know, allergies, toxic metals, toxic metals, that's a big one. Poor digestion, constipation. There's a connection from <laughs> below to above. People don't realize. So, you know, people have to realize that sometimes simple little things that they're not doing, like drinking water and eating, you know, properly good food. Uh, preservatives, of course, are toxins. There's a lot of other toxins that can affect you. But they might be causing the problem. Meds, uh, hormones, stress, hormones, stress, of course. You know, if you put out a lot of cortisol, it affects the way your brain works. Uh, low or high sodium levels, uh, blood pressure, heart disease, poor circulation. I mean, all of those things add to the problem. Not enough oxygen to the brain. Exercise helps to clear you up. More yeah. epinephrine and, no, uh, you know, norepinephrine from your adrenal gland will, cl- you know, open everything up. So if you're all clogged up, you know, that's part of the brain function, or the brain fog problem, too. So there's a lot of things going on here. Yeah. So what are some of the best ways that people can boost brain function? Well, for one thing, do all the stuff we're yeah. talking <laughs> Do the opposite of what you just said. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's there's a, a list like, we, you know, getting the right aminos in. Okay. I actually put together a hit list here. I was just saying, hey, what have I used in the past? Okay. I, I'm going to cheat. I have a little cheat sheet here. But these are some of the things that help. But realize that the testing sets the pace for getting your body to work better under its own power. That's what we really want. So before anybody does anything, they need to get at least a hair test to see where they stand. Because you have a battle of the sedative versus the stimulating nutrients. Sedative, which, by the way, copper is sedative, and it puts your brain asleep. It just interrupts it's the way it functions in so many ways where something like potassium is stimulating and you've got to get the yin and the yang balanced out throughout your body and it'll work through all the tissues of the body 
-hmm. You know, just because you eat something that you think is good for your body, don't think it uh, doesn't affect your brain. And too much sugar is something that really corrupts the, the blood-brain barrier. So I wrote down some of the stuff I've used, alpha GPC. Now, panathenic acid, I've measured people with panathenic acid deficiencies. You know, you've got, uh, what, uh, choline utilization is based on panathene. And, you know, if you have a panathenic acid deficiency, you're not getting enough choline for acetylcholine, which is the most common neurotransmitter in the brain. You, you can't get everything to communicate if you don't have that. So, and, you know, there's a lot at stake here because there are, you know, uh, biogenic amines. There are amino neurotransmitters. Uh, and then there's peptide neurotransmitters. There's all these different neurotransmitters that are responsible for, you know, connectivity in the brain. And everything's connected to the next thing. There's a feedback mechanism. You've got the enzymatic makeup of each brain cell. Do you have enough iron to, for the cytochromes there to make energy to think, you know? And then you've got the structure, like the myelin, all the cheese, the cerebrosides, phospholipids. I don't want to throw too much out, out, out there. But you've got to consider structure and function. So, like, something like alpha-GPC helps the neurotransmitters to work better. Something like panathenic acid, that helps the neurotransmitters. Uh, something like DHA helps the cerebrocytes to be, so you have better uh, buildup of lipids and, 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 and copper does too. Copper is involved with lipid, uh, you know, utilization too. So you make collagen from, I mean, there's a lot of things that copper, uh, you know, does. And if you have too much of one thing, it can cancel out another thing. So uh, other things, uh, I guess, folic acid, everybody talks about folic acid. It's a biggie with addicts, by the way. Huh folic acid. Um, something else, vinpositine, you've heard of vinpositine, circulation, opens up the blood vessels. Hawthorne does that too, just like it does, works for your heart, it works for your brain. Mm -hmm. uh, arginine, like nitrous, everybody's talking about nitric oxide, enhances circulation. Exercise increases oxygenation. If you do all these things at the same time, it, it's almost like a revival meeting. So uh, I also put down, oh, phosphatidyl, I think you had sent me something about phosphatidylcholine. Well, I find phosphatidylserine helps in cell communication. Again, it helps neurotransmitters to be more effective so you can remember easier, things like that. Uh, the DMAE, if you heard DMAE, yes. forms acetylcholine, again, which you need. CDP choline, uh, you've heard of uh, cytine diphosphate, okay? That also helps neurotransmitter synthesis in general. It helps dopamine, it helps them all. Okay, I don't want to do too many details because yeah. You know, they just want yeah, to, you're going to give the uh, transcriptionist a run so, for her money. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> omega-3s, of yeah. course. Uh, you know, phospholipids like choline is really good. Oh, a couple things that I've used really help as adaptogens. Ginseng mm -hmm. and Bacopa Minera. That was my kind of wish list. If I ever make a brain product to boost things on top of balancing things, I'd probably put all those in there if I could get them to mix right. Yeah. <laughs> so. So some are addressing structure, some are addressing function, okay. some are inside the cell, some are between the cells. So it, the idea is just to kind of wake up the brain. And the rest of the body, thankfully, doesn't all use up all this stuff. The brain will get a lot if you put enough in. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's talk about copper. Um, I know with all my clients, every single one has overt or hidden copper toxicity. It's such a huge problem. And none of the doctors are, or very, very few are aware of this issue because they test the copper in the, the RBC test, and the copper is usually low when we want to be testing the tissues because that's where we're going to get our information and reveal copper toxicity in somebody. So why don't we talk about how copper toxicity affects the brain negatively? Well, when you have too much of any nutrient, like copper is very powerful. It does a, a few hundred things they know about in the body. It forms collagen. It helps to form dopamine. I mean, it, it, it's countless what it does. The problem is... In here particularly, when it's higher, it means it's not being utilized properly. It's really deficient in the place it needs to be. So you're robbing the places that need the copper, and it's ending up interfering with other functions in the brain, like zinc and iron. Your, your brain needs iron to, you know, to run monoamine oxidase, as an example. And if there's too much copper around, it, the iron can't bind with the monoamine oxidase, and it cuts your serotonin down, which can throw you off balance. I mean, it can cause mood swings memory, all kinds of stuff. I mean, when you look at what all these neurotransmitters do, it's amazing and where they come from. So as with anything, I tell people it's bad enough to have a deficiency. So if your copper is low, you can have, you've heard of steely hair disease. I mean, there's a lot of things. Copper being high can be anything from leukemia. I mean, serious stuff, okay, to neurodegenerative problems. And it's because it gets in the way of other things and collection tissues it doesn't belong and weakens it. Because it has a, there's a displacement effect between particularly minerals. They're very powerful. 
you know, you can, if you took all potassium out of the body or all copper, you die like instantaneously. If you took all, uh, you know, vitamin D out of the body, you probably never die. You just have kind of spongy bones. It, it, vitamins aren't as powerful. Cleaning up the two and realizing the minerals really set the pace. They're the spark plugs for the whole operation of the body. Uh, you know, you can start to, to knock down the, the, the displacement problem. So you can put more iron and zinc in, as an example, and methionine to knock the copper out of the places it doesn't belong. Just think of um, maybe rust. Copper, even though we're talking iron when you think of rust, uh, you get copper in a place where it's too much and it interferes with, like, you know, the, the cross-linking in, uh, uh, you know, zinc and iron being used in, in building tissue. It just overwhelms them and it stops the process so it weakens the tissue as an example or in the way of the enzymes that you know like serotonin uh the precursor to that monoamine oxidase the copper gets in the way of iron doing its job so it's really a matter of copper getting in the way of zinc and iron and a lot of other things that it affects uh, a high calcium with a high copper real bad that that adds up to more problems when calcium gets stuck in the brain and copper gets stuck in the brain you can develop along with a little aluminum to boot you know, Parkinson's disorder, but it's these excesses are far more dangerous than deficiencies. And deficiencies are easier to fix yeah. than excesses. So just to give you a couple ideas, I mean, there's lots more if you want to go there. <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't we talk about, I love that. I love that explanation because it's um, it's just so good. I, I just love it so much. because there, There's so much to this. It's so the depth that you can go to in interpreting a hair mineral analysis just blows my mind. So I love your take on it. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about mercury um, because a lot of proponents of hair mineral analysis say to avoid fish that have mercury in them because we see higher mercury levels in people that eat fish. But then there's other proponents that say, like Chris Kresser and Dr. Jack Cruz, who's a neurosurgeon, that talk about how if you eat fish with enough selenium in it, that that will counteract the effects of the mercury. And I'm wondering if you think that uh, increase, uh, if you eat fish that have adequate selenium, they, of course they all have mercury, but if they have adequate selenium, is the selenium detoxing the mercury? And, and that's why we're seeing the elevated levels on the hair test. Well, that's, that's the issue. It, is the mercury being cast out at the moment when it's high there, uh, you know, of the body? Maybe that's a good thing. I mean, you get, that's why you need the test to see where you're at. I mean, obviously lower levels are always desirable, although... Even when you have a low finding in in, uh, in hair, as an example, uh, it might be stored somewhere. Like like mercury loves the uterus in woman. It loves the prostate in men. It loves your brain. It causes frontal headaches. I mean, there's a whole list of what mercury can do that's making people miserable. So it, it's really a function uh, of what's already in your body that keeps it in balance. Like if you have enough selenium and sulfur, as an example, enough zinc and iron, the mercury and methionine which a lot of people don't have enough methionine, believe it or not. The mercury will collect easily, more easily, especially with high calcium, which likes to keep mercury in. Potassium, phosphorus, iron, zinc, they all keep it out. Selenium's a good one, too. It's not just onesie twosie. See, this is the problem. It's not all one or the other. It's the combination, and it's the balance in your body. So you and I, let's say we both were eating fish that's high in mercury, and who knows what else is in there, right? But it just happens to be high in mercury. If your body's more in balance than mine, then the chances are you won't retain that mercury as easily. Your body will be able to eliminate it, whereas in my case, it might build up. So we have to figure out, is it coming in or is it going out? And you know the funniest thing, it's not funny, it's sad. I've had a lot of people on migraine you know, medication, and they're getting headaches, frontal headaches, which is classic for mercury. All they got to do is clear the mercury out. They never need a medication again. Stuff like that happens all the time. You know, talking about the brain, other things too. So we need to know what it's what's doing, what's going on, and we need to fight it. You know, more fiber helps. So I mean, you can't control what's in the fish, and you can't just indiscriminately take selenium and expect magical things to happen because you got to weigh one nutrient against the other. You've got to see the overall effect because it's the patterns of things. They work together. They don't work independently of yeah. one another. Yeah, they need each other. So you need to put deliver it to the body in a, the way the body needs on a specific level at the moment. And then as you put it back into balance, you'll find that it doesn't take as much to keep you there. And it'll define what you can eat more of and less of. Like maybe only about a third of the food out there is really what your genes are looking for. And you'll discover it because you basically have omnivores, all types, vegetarians, all these subtypes, and carny vegans. 
And of course, carnivores or Eskimos is an example, and the gauchos, and the Maasai, and things like that. So you've got extremes, and you've got mix-ups of what the different dietary patterns are, and it's just not it's not fair to just try to relegate it to simplicity. It's re it's called diagnostic reductionism. We're trying to go down a onesie twosie when really it's everything weighed against the middle. It's the balance is the key. So you shouldn't be worried about eating fish. I mean, yeah, you, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? Stop eating fish because maybe 10% is tainted out there? Yeah. How about building up your body so even if you do eat it, it doesn't do anything yeah. to you? That's okay. the way to go. Yeah, okay. that's, that's what I'm leaning towards. I, I was taught by Dr. Lawrence Wilson, avoid all fish. And I just don't buy it. I don't buy that because I think it is... Um, there is like you have selenium in the fish that it, you will detox it out. The more and more balanced your body becomes, you have a greater resistance to building up toxins in your body and detoxing them better. Well, it's it's what's in your body that counts. I tell people because you know it stuff will stick to your ribs or not depending on your balance. Okay, I'll give you a quick example. Something really interesting. A guy that lives on uh, Lake Erie. You've heard of the Great Lakes, Lake Erie, which was known for mercury problems. Yeah. And uh, he's a long-term client of ours. He became a fast metabolism. You know how that, that is. Was really balanced. Was doing great. He's a super athlete. And all of a sudden, he sends in a, a retest to us. And uh, his mercury was right off the chart. And I said, what the heck is that about? He goes, I have no idea. And we figured out. You know what had happened? He bought a whole freezer full of perch from a fisherman on Lake Erie. And I told him there's an EPA center near him, we found. And he took this, the fish down, and they found it was full of mercury. That's where his mercury came out. But I tell you this, within the next three or four months, from test that test to the next, that mercury was right down to zip again. It yeah. just was in and out so fast, especially with the change in the hair test recommendations. Yeah. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Now, some people, the stuff hangs around forever because they never balance out. Yeah, yeah. So bottom, the, the, the bottom line to me is getting your body in balance is the best protection against any kind of environmental irritation. Yeah. So do you think that people, maybe when they're starting out on a, a mineral balancing program like that we do, that maybe they should avoid fish in the beginning and then when their body's more balanced then introducing more? Or do you think it doesn't matter? Just go for go for your fish and your sushi. If they're doing the right vitamins, if they're being good on their diet, I don't worry about it as much unless there's something really obvious. And remember, I've tested Paris. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. If people respond to the hair test within a framework that you know we call acceptable, uh, that's one thing, but if something doesn't happen, the, the test can point out the little things that are going on that might, you know, a pre, uh, more or less lead you to the conclusion that there's there's something wrong here. There's maybe, you know, there's a parasite or there's an infection. Like high copper shows inflammation and infection. It's also the, one of the biomarkers for leukemia. You got to keep an eye on all these things when they get really extreme. So the point being that uh, we need to put it all together and not worry about the little details as much until we get from test to test and then we say you know what that mercury is not moving maybe we'll cut down your fish on the next phase okay yeah. until your body catches up because everybody you know is so different than the next that even the test you got to be adaptable with and you've got to you know kind of troubleshoot as you go along it, with your clinical expertise on top of what the lab is telling us. Yeah. It's really the lab knows more than we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they push a button and there you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so that makes total sense to me. M much more sense than everyone across the board not eating fish. Well, and these docs, I mean, I love the. I work with uh, all ty all types of, prof you know, medical professionals. But quite frankly, they like to go to the, you know, the reductionist theory. There's that one thing that does it all. Yeah. And yeah. I tell them, no, it, there's a number of things going on here. It's usually a multidimensional problem people have, and you've got to look at the bigger picture, quite simply. And you'll always see more than you thought you could see because, you know, just taking one thing out of context doesn't get you anywhere in this life. It just doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work that way in medicine. I mean, that it does for them because they're dealing with symptoms. My head hurts. Here's a painkiller. My cholesterol is high. Here's a I mean, to them, it's a reductionist way of going about, you know, fixing you. Because yeah. it's quick fix, and it doesn't take all this other into account. You know, 99% of what's going on that got you into a crisis, that put you in that office, or that threw some of your crisis chemistries off, nobody's looking at. And when you look at that, the more you can set it straight from the start, the less likely you, you know, you'll, uh, you'll die prematurely. You won't make the 110 or more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to get drugged up. Yeah. You know what the number one cause of premature preventable death is right now? What? 
premature preventable death. Side effect complications of correctly prescribed medications interacting and compounding over time. Yes. Yeah. Drugs aren't the answer either. They can get us by in a short term, but we don't want to get off of them as quick as we can. But most people aren't. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I think, you know, medications do save lives. We do need them. To, I have some of my clients on medications that, that bring them back from the brink of death, that, you know, keep them from high blood sugar or high blood pressure damaging their body because nutrition is slow. It, it takes time for the, the uh, supplements to start working and for the body to accept them and detox. Nutritional programs can be slow. So I always advise my clients to stay on their medications just for a little while until we can fix the underlying root cause. Well, and you know, people that go off too fast, I had a fellow, Matt, who had asthma, 15. Mm -hmm. We tested him and his magnesium was low, which is typical. He had some toxic things in him. He was all balanced. Uh, he was a slow metabolism already. We're, mm -hmm. we're born fast. We're turning slow too quickly. Slow means for every bite of food, we, we release less energy and get less of the nutrients from that food. Digestion, absorption, utilization, elimination, all that. So with him... He was just so anxious to get off of his inhalers, and I said, don't, just stay with this for a while. But he went off anyway, and then he calls, you know, five and a half months later, we'd already done a test, we're into the second phase. He calls up, he says, my asthma's coming back. And so I asked him, I said, what did you do? He, I said, have you been doing following the program? He goes, yeah, I was doing great, and then all of a sudden I got it back. And I finally got it out of him that he'd stopped the medication from day one of being on this program. I said, you can't do that. So I got him to start using it at a lesser level. And then over time, it took about a year and a half, and he was able to stop, kind of like me with my asthma. Yeah. And then that was it. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. although I went pretty much uh, almost cold turkey when I was treated by a doctor in the, by that research center down in New York. It was very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, and and are, it, you, are you having your clients do coffee enemas at all? Uh, you know, when I was in, like, Malibu Health and Rehab and things we did, we had three different types of naturopaths. We had different types of chiropractors, osteopath, doctor... Stein camp. We used to do just virtually everything we could do yeah. to get these darn celebrities looking good in record time. They, they said, well, I've got, to, I've got to go to a reunion and lose 50 pounds. They go, when's the reunion? Oh, it's about two months from now. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. just, I'm hooked on drugs. I got to, they used to live with us. That was an amazing program. But this all accelerated. Something like a coffee enema would accelerate elimination. You know, we did all types of different enemas with herbal blends. And I had a gal that was a specialist at that that could just figure out from the other test. What do we have to clean up? Do we, do we need to stimulate bile? You know, of course, we fix digestive systems. You know, a lot of people have pancreatic problems. You know, they have low stomach acid, weak stomach acid. I mean, it's amazing what we're running. It's amazing we're as healthy as we are sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and when you think about it, all the things that could go wrong. But the way to keep them from going wrong is to balance them for each of our unique biochemistries. That's the real trick, which is where the test comes in. Unless you're a Hunzen or something, and you don't have to do that. You just go back to where you came from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With living here, you know. But we're all mutts. We don't know what foods we need to eat. That's the problem. If you don't know your lineage. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, and copper, too much copper and calcium, that's a recipe for constipation. I mean, you can't think straight when you're constipated. Yeah. Copper increases cortisol, cuts down on epinephrine and norepinephrine, which your brain needs, like the fight or flight, you know. And even with, we talk about allergies, when you look at the mechanism of, of histamine, histamine is actually a neurotransmitter. It's an excitatory neurotransmitter. But you need zinc to control it, and you need histidine and the amino acid to make it. So if you fix histidine, you can usually fix histamine so it's just at the right level for your brain. But if it goes too crazy, you can have brain allergies and all these other allergies. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, it's amazing. Uh, you know, something like GABA. You know, um, GABA, you, you know, which is a, an amino, a amino acid neurotransmitter. That calms you down. A lot of people need more GABA. That's yeah. why they're like, oh, my God, the stress gets to them, you know? Yeah. And they need more GABA. And, um, you know, everything that stimulates, there's something to, to bring it down. You know, you've got uh, tyrosine forming um, serotonin and trip, uh, sorry, tryptophan forming serotonin and tyrosine uh, forming dopamine. Yeah. Now, those are opposites. I mean, tyrosine is yang and, you know, it's a stimulant, you know, uh, and tryptophan is a sedative. And that's the effect. You can almost read back to the mineral properties that make it up. If you look at vitamins, they're made of minerals. If you look at aminos, there's going to be more some minerals than others. That's what gives them their properties in the first place. That's why the hair test is so fundamental. It gets to the core of what's in you and, you know, what's really your body functions are all about inside the cell, outside the cell. Something like sodium not being in proportion to potassium ruins the way things move in and out of cells, brain cells included. You know, you just can't take it as, you know, onesie twosie. I'm sorry. It's just yeah. one size fits all. Yeah. Sorry.
Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, so what do you think? Um, let's talk a little bit about hair mineral analysis and the accuracy and validity of it. Um, because it's one thing that I'm trying to do is communicate to all the listeners and the world out there that hair mineral analysis uh, gets a bad rap, um, especially from the medical community. Um, there's a few totally junk science bogus studies out there that have, um, you know, ruined the reputation of hair mineral analysis with many medical doctors. So they don't use it, this very valid and expensive tool. So how many studies are out there that support the validity? I know we talked earlier, you said you've written a paper on this. And so why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about that? About 7,000 I counted that wow. back it up. <clears throat> now, there's only six that question it. But you got to realize the government already went through this. That's why they licensed the lab. That's why they created the whole technology and gave it a license. It's just like any other medical lab. So anybody that re you know refutes the validity doesn't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Then they might as well stop taking lab tests for blood, anything. for the, Because the hair test has already been proven. It was invented in 1903 for animals, to help animals. It was only in the 40s that Dr. Roger Williams said, hey, why don't we do this on people? Good idea. Then the government did a 21-year study called an evaluation of research in the U.S. on human nutrition. And they concluded that all diseases die related. The solution to illness can be found in nutrition. By the way, that was a half a billion dollars in 50s dollars, which is a few billion in today's dollars. And they concluded that we needed the hair test. And that fact, they're the ones that set the pace for developing the technology to do the hair test and the other tests, too. Yeah. And the problem is... Uh, you talked about it earlier, politics. Politics really kept it, you know, from going out as quickly. Now, what people don't know is that when I looked at the research, the six tests, one of them in the Journal of the American Medical Association, which, by the way, it doesn't belong there. It's not a, a study. The, the guy took different hair samples from different places and, and, and even mixed it up. I mean, didn't do the right leg, didn't do prep right, for one thing. And of course, you're not you're going to get mixed results because if you're going to take a whole bunch of different, you know, from the front of the head, long hair is not cutting it at the, you know, where you're supposed to. I mean, there's a whole little trick to getting this to be perfect. But even when those studies were done, you were still looking at fifth generation ICP mass spectrometers. They're tenth generation now. They're so damn accurate. Pardon my French. Yeah, it's not funny. So I know because I understand lab technology. You know, I was going to set my own lab up once, so I really got into this. It's bogus and. Unfortunately, a lot of times people believe rumors before they believe facts. Mm -hmm. Now, the plain fact of the matter is, in other countries outside the U.S., 70% of the medical doctors outside of this country use that this lab, you know, has as, as members, okay? 70% of the, the docs outside of this country are medical doctors, whereas only 30% in this country are. And it's all because of one guy that wrote actually tried to set up the labs for, for being wrong. They actually, there was a concerted effort to, and by the way, he didn't stop with hair testing. He hates naturopaths, he hates chiropractors, he hates everything that we would call alternative or complementary medicine. Everything but what your doctor does, this particular group, Steve, Dr. Barrett, by name, they hate. And he's involved, he's gonna be hopefully taken off of the internet but right now, he's losing a huge case against uh, by the Homeopathic Association of Canada. He hates homeopathics. He hates, uh, come on. Yeah. He's, he's working against what's been proven, what's licensed, what's, you know, you can't do that. If you can't see the guy's a nut, then, you know, I'm sorry, but you don't get it, you yeah. know? So when I wrote this paper, I was just fascinated with, I mean, the, all the agencies in the government that rely on this test. All the licensing boards that you know run the health and human services of all these countries, come on. Trust me, if there was any question about this thing, it wouldn't be on the books. It wouldn't be as it is. Yeah. And so people have got to realize that. If they don't like the test that you're administering, then I would suggest if they don't believe that, then they should stop doing all the tests that are being done by labs. i tell you why. And I've seen this time and time again. Believe it or not, blood tests, there are more mistakes on than any other type of test. Not hair test. Not urine test. Blood test. I've seen it happen. I had a woman, you know, AST and LT, the two liver enzymes? Yeah. Hopefully. She's in perfect health. This woman I've been working with for years. Her regular physicals are perfect. Her hair test is near perfect. She's in her almost 92 now. Is not on any meds. And this woman goes in and all of a sudden, her those two enzymes in the liver, which could mean she has cancer or a terrible infection or, you know, the liver is just a mess. The doc says, oh, you got cancer. We got to put you on chemo. And... 
she calls me. She goes, you know, I, I said, you just had the test. Get them to repeat the test because when they take that blood sample, they have to spin it and put it through the ICP mass in 15 minutes. They only have a window of opportunity for 15 minutes. And I've seen this happen time and time and time again. They'll take a break and there's a whole bunch of these samples sitting in the, in the air for more than 15 minutes. And guess what? When they put it through, it's always wrong. I mean, I could talk about every sample there. And they make more mistakes. That's why they repeat the test so quickly. When was the last time you had to repeat a hair test? I don't think. I can't even remember. Yeah. You know, they're that good. And the, the mass spectrometers, they can work through it. They can burn right through it. So, you know, just to, just conclusively, people, you know, we're scientists. We're clinicians. We're, we're in the know. It's just nonsense. Anybody that doesn't understand that a lab's a lab's a lab, and this is allowed because it's been checked out for you. And anybody that says it isn't is I don't know what they are. They're not from this planet. I'll tell yeah. you. <laughs> or they're just completely ignorant or they have an agenda. I'll yeah. Yeah. I know when I first was considering getting a hair test, I asked my naturopathic doctor about them. She's like, well, they're not really all that accurate. And I, I asked another person, a homeopath who's a, uh, runs a Santa Monica homeopathic pharmacy, very, very um, intelligent person saying like, oh, they're not that accurate. You may not want to bother. And, you know, it's just people, they just aren't aware of it. They just don't know how accurate and valid and the, the decades of research that has gone behind, uh, that is behind interpreting these hair tests. It's, it takes years to learn how to do it. It's not simple. You're not just looking at your mineral and metal levels. It's, that's not what you're using it for. But that's what most people think. And all we do, I mean, it makes so much sense, is we use the law of opposites to fix things. Now, I know Dr. Wilson doesn't get it, this part of it. But if your body's high in certain nutrients and low in others, you need to feed the opposite into your body. So it works every time. I've done it 300,000 times almost, either directly or indirectly. So the idea is if your body's got too much calcium building up in the wrong place and not enough potassium, you've got to fill yourself full of foods that are high in the potassium and low in the calcium till it sets itself straight. And again, it's not just those two, but a lot of things. Yeah. So, I mean, it gives you a good basis. Nobody else really does that. You can't predict the diet from that, from any other test that you can with the hair test. You can't even predict your daily vitamins as well, you know, because an amino test just tells you about aminos. You know, uh, a test from blood for fat-soluble vitamins just tells you about fat-soluble vitamins. The urine test for uh, uh, water-soluble ones only tells you about that. This kind of pushes it all together, a holistic, a more complete way of approaching this thing. And if you fall through the cracks, you've always got other places to go. Maybe you need more digestive enhancement. Maybe you need to clear a parasite. Maybe you need to go on supercalation. Whatever it is, we've got an indicator that starts you off in the right direction and directs you from there. So we're still back to that same program. And, hey, I even have an award because of saying that. And I had as my mentor, Dr. Uh, uh, Abraham Hoffer, who was the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Orthomolecular Medicine. He came out and he says, you're darn genius. How did you know hair test was so important? I go, I, don't know. I said, how did you know? He goes, well, you know, I'm the Journal of Ortho Molecular Medicine. We, we catalog all the studies on it. And he says, I moved from ca to Canada from the U.S. because I used to treat schizophrenia without drugs. And they hated me here. They wanted me to use drugs. So I ended up retiring in Canada. The heck with this place. They just want to drug you up. And when they started, you know, Linus Pauling, who has two Nobel Prizes, uh, I used to know him from cancer control. And he and Hoffer worked together in figuring out a lot of the technology on top of what the labs were doing. He was, they were consultants. And, I mean, these guys, they run journals. They are the highest scientific authority you can go to. You can even listen on my, my website to the radio show with Dr. Hoffer. I have radio shows catalog. So, I mean, that's, these people are the ones that are writing the books. Uh, Dr. Brelli and Lord, uh, you know, they write lab manuals. They, they have it right there. Hair test is good for this, that, and the other thing. I mean, bingo. It's not good for everything, but it's good as a panoramic view of where everything's going. Yeah. So maybe that's what the homeopath is saying. Hey, look, I, I, it's part of the deal, but not the whole deal. Well, is stabbing you with a homeopathic here or there and forgetting the rest the right way to go? Or giving you an herb as an herbologist with, or a little acute? No, you got to balance the system out. You probably wouldn't even need the darn homeopath or the herbalist or anybody else if you could get your own metabolism under control. Yeah. See, so they're, they don't even realize, well, maybe they do. They're shooting themselves in the foot if they like hair analysis in a way. Same yeah. with medical doctors. That's why the medical profession doesn't like anything that works naturally. Because generally, they're losing clients. And unfortunately, our system is based on making more money off of our sickness, not our wellness. There's no incentives to keep us well because the doctors make more money when we're sick. The drug companies make more money when we're sick. Almost a quarter of the economy is based on, on sickness, not wellness. Where's the money in wellness? You don't need much when you're well, mm -hmm. right? So people have got to realize that. 
And I'm sorry to go, you know, be so philosophic and off in the in the zone with this, but hey, I started the Say No to Prescription Drug campaign in Washington. You would not believe the resistance. I, yeah. I and I know Hatch and I know some of the other Congress people that are fighting against this. And trust me, it's a real problem. We have special interests that would just as soon keep, you know, us sick because that's where the money is. Yeah. And as Steven Seagal said in one of his movies, Western medicine prolongs sickness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> so, but in other countries, it's completely the opposite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a fellow in uh, South Africa, and he's a great guy, Yang Whale. And uh, he says to me, he says, what is wrong with you Americans? I go, what do you mean? What's wrong with us Americans? You tell me. He goes, whenever I get W, he has satellite. Whenever I get WGN, all I see is drug commercials. Yeah. What mm -hmm. the heck is wrong with you? Don't you listen to what they say? Why would you take that stuff with all that? You know, well... You know, it's because, you know, airtime marketing is what runs the country. And then legitimate things that can really help you are, you know, upended. They're put to the side. The other problem is, too, that the supplement industry goes crazy. They don't like this either. I mean, health food stores don't benefit when you test because that means you buy less. They can keep on talking you into more and more vitamins and other things that you don't need because there's no accountability. And the doctor actually... The, the meanest doctors I have met, and there's a few, although most aren't really as mean, or they're just ignorant and unfortunate. I love Doc, don't get me wrong, but I've met a few that I swear to gosh, uh, if I could just take them, you wouldn't believe what they say. They go, hey, you know, if everybody was well, I'd be out of business. Hey, yeah. Not like I want everybody to be well, so I, ha I don't have as many patients. Yeah. And I can't, you know, I won't have as much money. So there's that issue going on, and people have just got to cut to the chase. Politics is driving us down, you know, yeah. our, everything. Mm -hmm. our no, I am right there with you. I 100% agree with you. I'm actually going to do a podcast on that, on the whole conspiracy theory about yes. big pharma, big chem, the big agra, and the government, how they're conspiring to keep us sick because they make money off of us, and it makes me sick. So uh, that's one thing that I, you know, I'm just trying to help people get better doing natural means and prevention, and there isn't a lot of money in it, <laughs> frankly, um, but I, it's, it's something that needs to be uh, addressed and, and, and voiced. So thank you for that. So what do you think is the most pressing health issue in the world today? In the world? Starvation. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We have the poor country starving, and then we're overfed with the wrong things. I mean, that's it's 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 one extreme to the next. So in this country, we're eating a whole bunch of stuff that's bad for us, that's causing malnourishment. And in these other countries, they don't have enough. They have undernourishment. So I'd say that in general. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your book, Personalized Nutrition? Yeah, you know, I just tried to put it all together. Do you mean the you mean your personal life book? Yes, yes. Yeah. The, um, the book is really cataloging. The first book was more about the history of how we used to try to personalize, you know, from the uh, organ types of the Egyptians and the, you know, constitutional types of the Asians. And, and then, of course, with the, uh, um, you know, with the Greek, they had four humors, four personalities and two body types. I mean, ways to try to differentiate from person to person that eventually led to all these tests that we're talking about, like the hair test and everything else. The second book really put more about how the tests are used, all the tests, you know, at the, at the time. So all the metabolic tests, you know, the nutrient cell regulators, toxins and genetic uh, tests there are, and basically how to put it together so that, at, you know, we probably know instead of knowing only maybe four or five percent of what's going on in the body, which is what regular medicine does. Now we know 95 percent of what's going on in the body when we add those in. So I just try to talk about it and try to show how to systematize it, because one thing lends itself to the next you know you don't have to put it all like you know how people they tend to fragment and specialize oh i'm going to be an allergist well fine but allergies you know just avoiding those foods doesn't straighten out the rest of your metabolism it maybe prevents the allergy in the moment or i'm going to be a toxicologist i'm only going to look at toxins well cleaning the toxins is a good idea but what about all the nutritional elements all the you know mm -hmm. you got to kind of put it together so you're stuck with putting things together and i tried to get that part in the book and showed that there's about 10 levels of testing that you can go through that just put everything on the table. And back in, you know, Malibu Health and Rehab, we would have a whole plan laid out for, I mean, in the moment and fix the people, lose the weight, get them off the drugs, fix their metabolisms, you know, all that. And then uh, try to set them up on it, you know, for life from that point on. So that they could know that they were eating the right thing. They could know they're taking the right vitamin and, you know, uh, be that much better for it. You know, and we've made such improvements in people. I mean, it's amazing. I think our oldest right now is like 98 
is on no meds, can do 50 push-ups. I mean, this guy's, I mean, that's the way I want to be, right? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I know that's not 110, but we'll, we'll yeah. get some. He's, yeah. he's probably going to make it. <laughs> I, I hope so. Especially <laughs> under your care. <laughs> I hope so. And, you know, I wanted to use my mother as an example because she did everything that I wanted. You know, I tested her. She was a fast metabolism, and she died at 90 because she fell, not of old age. Yeah. But I wanted to put her. And I can't do that because she's passed away. I just feel would feel horrible. But I wanted to put her on the website and say, guess the age of this woman. You would have never guessed. She looks so much younger. And even when I go to class reunions, and I'm sure, you know, you'll see this as you age because you're so young. But you go to these class reunions and you see what repetitive stress of improper eating, the drugs, the stress, everything else to talk to. You can't even recognize some of your old friends. They look so bad. Yeah, and yeah. then the ones that really look good are usually ones that are taking care of themselves yeah, every yeah. time. Yeah. So it's sad. And I've got a lot of my friends, they go, well, what's your secret? How come you still have muscles and you look pretty young and all that stuff and your hair is still there? I do this test. I do. I take care of myself. Yeah, yeah I should do that. And they do it and they're surprised when it works. It really works. Yeah. Hair test, no matter what, and you see it in the book, every section, whether it's organic acids, amino acids, all the stuff people probably never heard of, it's all in there. It always starts out, you got to have a hair test first to compare everything else. So why not? Let's get it out there. Let's get more people doing it. Let's get people taking more care of themselves. Let's stop fooling around with guesswork. No more guesswork, okay? Yeah. And although the, the hair test isn't the end all, it's it's really a large part of the puzzle. you got yes. a major part of the puzzle covered here. So yeah. why not? Because yeah. the way we're doing it now, 99 point something percent are failing the test so miserably and all those little upsets, all those nutritional imbalances, all that toxic infiltration, all the disparity between this, the autonomic nervous system and your body and the stress glands and the hormones is killing us. Yeah. And what are the answers to this quick fix here? Take this drug, take that drug. And then you got to take another drug when the side effects from that drug build up. I mean, yeah, they're destroying your drug. liver and they're really yes. your liver. And then your liver can't even use nutrition right. You're stuck. And then even, you know, I, I've had a couple experiences at UCLA where I've had two people that ended up there that collapsed, doctor, one of them a doctor, by the way, and they said, we, this guy can't do your test and take your vitamins. We don't approve it. And the doctor got on there and goes, you better do this. <laughs> he told him. He says, I'm doing it while I'm in the hospital because you're going to make me sicker. And he's a doctor. You, know, it's, you see, it's funny because, you know, uh, I've had a few people that were in injuries and other stuff, and the stress is really bad. We have those eight different metabolic types that the uh, hair test people put together. Very real. I know for myself as a fast metabolism, there's been twice when I've made, been made into a slow four mm -hmm. because of stress. My mother died. That was one of those. those Another was arsenic poisoning. I got poisoned by arsenic. Wow. Changed me right in front of my face from testing. Of course, I had a list of symptoms I didn't have, and I had this blotchy skin. Wouldn't you like going in to see the doctor? He's got these big red blotches all over him. It was, you know, and what do you do? Take a cortisone shot? No, 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 no. You got to figure out what it is and fix it. You know, yeah. that's the way. That's real healing. That's really pre preventing things before they happen. Whenever you can do it. Now, if you already have, you're on a drug. You have a condition. When can ever balancing nutrients in your body ever do anything but help? Yeah. When yeah. can cleaning out the toxins ever do anything but help? That's how people have to look at it. Yeah. And what's the downside of this? Well, according to the Haynes one, two, three, and four studies. 58% of America are taking so many of the wrong vitamins, they're actually doing more harm than good. That's a huge 40-year government study. Okay? So you just can't wing it. Centrum or whatever is not going to do it for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to go inside and see what you really need because even with a multiple vitamin with one of each, like if your calcium is high and potassium is low as an example and B6 is low and B1 is is low and, you know, your copper's high, I mean, your, your body's going to just take the copper and the calcium out of the pill and dump the rest. You see, you've got to bring those up in proportion to it. This is called quantum physiochemistry, and you put more of some things in it forces others out. They see that in B vitamins, but they don't seem to get it with minerals. You know, even with the trace elements, it's nice to have, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, like uh, 72 some odd minerals in one little formula, you know, mm -hmm. like a trace mineral kind of thing. But realize that's just to try to make up for what's in the soil. After that, you've got to add more of certain things in higher amounts to really get your body back into balance. But once you're there, maintenance is a breeze. Yeah. Less vitamins, less, you know, more of the foods that your genes are really looking for, less of the ones that, you know, you'll know are going to hurt you, period. And you'll know because as you get more balanced, you become more sensitive to what's around you. You'll make better choices. You'll feel bad when you eat too much ice cream or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. get away with it. No, you but don't. I know now when I have a glass of wine, 
I'm completely hungover. I don't do it very often once every couple of months, but I'm completely hungover the next day from one glass of wine because my body is so clean. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, that's the way it should be because we need to have a best defense mechanism. And that's part of the, being defensive is being sensitive. And most people, the more out of balance they get, the, the worse the choices they make in mm -hmm. life are. They, you know, you probably heard of that study where they, they, you know, they had little babies that they put certain foods in front of them and nine out of the ten babies always picked the healthiest food. Mm -hmm. Well, they did that with the adults and it was the other way around. <laughs> yeah, of course. You're addicted to things you may be allergic to or to sugar or to other things. It's just, and you know, addictive behavior is a big problem. Your neurotransmitters go off when you eat too much sugar. Sugar interferes, you know, your brain cells need sugar, but it, they need a steady flow, not spikes. So you got to make sure your insulin's working right. You don't have, in, you know, um, uh, you know, insulin resistance. Uh, we have a diabetes problem too. I mean, so it's either way, too much insulin, not enough insulin, whatever it is, we've got to keep things steady. Yeah. And most people, you know, their systems are already stressed out because they're out of balance. It creates, you know, it's like your body is a, a, a chemical factory. And, or think of an automobile factory with all those assembly lines. If you don't have everything in place, you're going to have, at the end of those assembly lines, you're going to have only partial completion of the final car that you're making oh where's the tires i know that line's all backed up it's the same with your body structurally and functionally and the net effect of that is it wears on the rest of the body and it blows your bone reserves out like a lot of people get by doing the wrong thing for a long time and think they're very clever oh, i'm gonna eat pizza I'm, I'm healthy i'm not on drugs i got news for you every time you use something like that as an excuse you're, you're self being self-destructive because little by little the nutrient reserves in your body will be depleted and you will fall off the cliff. I've seen this many times. I, in fact, I worked with a couple of people uh, that were models that had leukemia, had no idea. Oh, I look good. How could I have that? Yeah. I said, I'm sorry, but the tests are the tests. I sent them to, you know, specialists. And you know what? Both of those people, were, their lives were saved because we pinpointed the copper early on before the darn thing really got going. Because when you're blowing copper out of, you know, the bone marrow, uh, because you're not, you're making too many, uh, you know, white blood cells. Oh, I'm sorry, not enough white blood cells. No, oh, too many white blood cells. Yeah. Uh, you start blowing out copper. It's the first chemical sign that you may be developing leukemia, and the regular tests don't even pick it up for a while. So, in the case of these three people, they were, you know, DEXA scan. All these other tests were done. They found a tiny bit in the bone marrow, zapped it. They're alive to this day. That was seven or eight years ago. Wow. So, knowing this can be very, it can save your life, yeah. and maybe you're not going to save your life. In just in the moment, but you are for the rest of your life. So the steps you take today determine your wellness destiny tomorrow, how far you get before breaking down. And let me tell you, I don't care how rich you are, how good looking you are, how happy you are, your health falls apart, that all goes away. Yeah, You're going to want that health. So people should really be more uh, in tune with the most important thing of all is feeling good. We call this the science of feeling good. Being healthy and not being dependent. I hate having to be dependent on... You know, bad opinions. Everybody's got opinion. Well, this works for me. You should have it. I go, but, but maybe I'm different than you. Maybe it's not going to help me. Maybe a little bit would help, but, you know, the way you're doing it, how do I know it works for me? Let's be scientific. Let's stop making it up as we go along, and let's stop using silly logic that's not based on facts. It sounds logical, so people do it. Well, this worked for me, so it should work for you. That sounds logical, but that's just not the way it works. Yeah, yeah. You know, what works for me could be damaging to you and vice versa. It's really, you know a case of getting down and dirty and, and seeing what's inside of you. Yeah. you know, that's how we like to say, what's gotten into you lately? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> where, know, where can people find you? I know there's probably a lot of people that are going to be chomping in the bit wanting to work with you. So uh, do you work with clients all over the world or where are you located in the U.S.? Yeah, we're mostly internet now. I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, curbside like we were in the Saddleback Medical Group. So, you know, we can, we can work with anybody anywhere to some extent. Uh, and so I guess we have two websites. Now you're going to see a change because we're in transition with the, that other company, Only Nature's Finest. They're putting together an incredible presentation. Uh, so uh, pncscience.com, www.pncscience.com. That's the old PNC, like personalized nutrition consultants, mm -hmm. science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. And that's the old one. That's going to have me on Fox, please. Uh, Fox, you know, thought this was the greatest thing since sliced potato. Put us in the news for four minutes. Oh my gosh. Uh, they thought it was great. And this woman lost all this weight. Of course, we can use hair testing for losing weight, not just mental problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the other one is personalized-nutrition.com. Now, that's the newer website, but that's, you know, it has me. It has a lot of my 
celebrities that I work with pictures of, and it has a lot more of the, you know, the flash. I don't know what they're going to do with the two websites, but we stop right there. So we have two websites, not to be confused, <laughs> but the PNC uh, Science and then the Personalized Dash Nutrition Consultant. So. Okay. Yeah, so listeners, if you you like what Dr. Teft had to say today, you can go uh, to his two websites and learn all about him and contact him as all his contact information. And Dr. Teft, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was so informative. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for having me and keep up the good work. Yeah, thank you. And listeners, uh, if you want to learn all about detoxification and my mineral balancing program called Mineral Power, go to live2110.com. You can learn all about that. And thank you so much for listening to the show. I hope you heard something that helped you improve your brain function today.